Hi, I'm Charlie Montotoyello with Blue Bear Flutes, and of course our website, bluebearflutes.com. Uh, you'll also find us on Instagram, which is really, I guess, one of my favorite things to always put a plug in here for because our Instagram looks incredibly cool. My wife takes pictures of just about everywhere we go. Once in a while I might slip one of my own pictures in there, but they're usually hers, so you can expect a good quality. Um, and then uh, we have places we've been, things we've done, videos, contests, and yada, 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 all the way down the line on Instagram, which you can find us there under Blue Bear Flutes also. Not Blue Bear Flutes also, but just Blue Bear Flutes. And not just Blue Bear Flutes, Blue Bear Flutes. Anyway, so uh, today's video are three quick little tips to help you better improv, or to become better at improv is really, I guess, if you want to throw all the lingo in there. Uh, on the Native American flute. These are things that are that are just, you're gonna say, I can't believe I didn't think of that. Uh, m hopefully most of you have thought of it already, and if you haven't, this would be certainly a good reminder. This is a technique that I use when I'm writing a speech, when I'm telling a story, when I'm doing this or that, or creating marketing promotions or doing anything. And it'll work on playing the flute, which is really how I come up with my improvs that I do on playing the Native American flute. So an improv, just to give you an idea, is when you kind of go off on a, your own tangent and play your own thing. It's kind of like me talking. <laughs> anyway, so... It's not an improv. That's me playing something that I have played about a bajillion times. And hopefully, those of you who have heard it at the beginning of our videos and have also uh, seen me do it in a video on how to play this kind of music, recognize that song as the intro to music to most of our videos. It is not an improv. It's something that is played over and over again. It's like playing, I don't know, Mary Had a Little Lamb on your flute. It's a song. It's something that is already there. But this, this is more of an improv. So that's just kind of an improv. And it doesn't matter if you're doing this on a six hole flute that plays like the six hole flutes we make, which you don't have to keep a finger covered to play it properly. Uh, whereas most six hole flutes that you guys might have already, if it's not one of the ones that I've made or other flute makers like myself, you have to keep something covering this. Just pretend that that hole doesn't even exist and keep something covering it if that's the kind of flute that you have. On any Native American flute, on any instrument, this technique will work. It's three, really when we were coming up for a title for this video, I didn't know if I should say three steps, three techniques. It's actually a step while using three techniques. Or really, I don't even know what the verbiage could possibly be. Maybe y'all could tell me what a good title for this video would have been other than Charlie rambling for 10 minutes. <laughs> Please don't use that one. Anyway, um, so it's three things. A beginning, a middle and an end and in my video this would probably be the middle part so three things the first thing you want to start off with something that kind of roots into what it is you're going to do and if you're playing for other people then you want to play something that kind of gets their attention so This is a beginning to a very lengthy song. Another beginning would be... That beginning of that song actually leads you and your listener in a direction that you're headed. And if you play something like that... And you don't even have to have a lot of skill and technique. We've got videos on skill and technique if you want to look over some of those, that might help you out. But if you don't have skill and technique down in your pocket, in your little bag of tricks, you can always... And I threw that one little... in there when I make that little jump. There's my jumping bird technique. Uh, we've got lots of videos on that one. But that's my beginning of this song. Then the middle part 
is usually pretty easy to, to come up with. You just kind of follow along the same idea that you were playing or conversely do something exactly the opposite. Starting off with one idea, playing some middle stuff that doesn't have anything to do with beginning or end, and then playing an end that finishes up your first idea, that's kind of cool. So there's, there's a way that you can do it regardless of what you want to put in the middle. But the middle, that's your meat and potatoes. <laughs> I'm hungry. Anyway, that's your meat and potatoes of what it is that your song is made of. It also is the longest portion of your, your improv. Um, it is the part that may not be as enlightening or as fun, some people would say, as the beginning and the end definitely should be. And certainly, yes, you should make the whole thing fun and great, but if you can make the beginning of it just a little more fun and the end of it just a little bit better, you know, the ending, you want to finish with a bang. They always say in the, in the performance and music industry, you know, you want to finish with a bang. I'm thinking the 1812 Overture. Um, but um, when you have the meat and potatoes part in the middle, it should be great. It should be excellent. It should be your best stuff you've ever played before in your life or that you will ever play in your life. Uh, or by another technique, you can always think of playing something better next time you play. But anyway, uh, you want that to be good stuff. But then the ending is going to be the coup de grace, the, the finish, the big finale, if you would. There's so many different ways we could overly embellish the concept of an ending. Uh, to really point out that your beginning should be subtle, but still should outline what your ending is going to do. So, and there again, your beginning could uh, point towards what your middle is going to be, and then your ending. But let's go back to what I was playing. And then the middle. That's if I'm playing something that is like my beginning. And then another uh, technique, of course, going back to the conversely idea that I told you about. And that was using a different style but still working on the same. So there's so many different ways you can vary the middle part of your excerpt, your song, your improv, you know, something that you've never played before, something you're making up your own flute music. This is the, the real key to it, beginning, middle, end. So let's work on an ending here real quick, and then I'm going to play something all the way through for you based on this, you know, technique, based on what we're playing right now. So that's kind of kind of cool. So let's play the beginning. And then let's play something different this time, even different yet. I kind of threw something just really wacko off the shelf in there and then played the ending that matched the beginning. So there are so many different ways you can do it. Find out what works best for you. Most people, the glasses have full people. I've got a video on that too. Y'all should really check out glasses have full. It's just using science, I think it was called, for uh, teaching somebody how to play the flute. It's a really good video. I enjoy it a lot. It's a technique I utilize a lot. Um, but if you're the glasses half full kind, you might want to play a beginning that kind of leads towards your middle that finishes with that great finale. So that's another technique.
on something like that, or you can just lead off. And so many different ways you can do it. Most important, beginning, a middle, and an end. You have your intro that tells everybody, hey, listen to this. You're gonna really love what's gonna be in the middle meat and potatoes part. Then you play the best you've ever played, but don't outshine the beginning or the end, unless you do, that, that's a technique. And then play something in the end, which is the end. It's the best thing you've ever done. Beginning, middle, end. You can't go wrong, easy stuff. And like I say, that's what I use on my everyday life. I get up, I make sure there's a beginning of my day, it's usually really short, and then the middle of my day lasts forever, usually for about three weeks, and then the end of my day ends up with me watching the Smurfs and falling asleep. So anyway, once again, I hope this video has helped you all out. Uh, other great videos on tips and tricks and playing the Native American flute, as well as making them. If you're interested in doing that, my name is Charlie Mato Toyella for Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. Y'all take care. Hey, by the way, if y'all like the shirt that I'm wearing, this is one of a number of new designs we have for Blue Bear Flutes uh, and BlueBearFlutes.com uh, for a number of the, the types of uh, designs and beautiful things. You can go and check out our merch side of our website, BlueBearFlutes.com. You can get a little guy with a bandana on there playing the flute. So uh, make sure you check those out. See what it is you like. You know, might be a good thing to add in there to your flute order.